All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this month's chapter marketing meetup. Today, we're talking about the CCIM Foundation's Named Education Scholarship Program and Marketing Tips to Maximize Participation. I'm Gina Florzak, the CCIM Institute's Manager of Content Strategy and Publications. And with me is our special guest, Carrie Pantel, Executive Director of the CCIM Foundation. We're gonna go through the presentation for the next 20 minutes. And of course, we will have some time for Q&A after. Feel free to use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen to ask questions throughout. We are recording today's chapter marketing meetup and it'll be available on the chapter marketing resources page. I'd like to introduce our guest today, Carrie Pantel. Carrie has been the executive director of the CCIM Foundation since last year. She's been working in the association space since 2016 and has extensive background working with foundations. Welcome, Carrie. Can you talk I with us? <laughs> can you can you talk with us about what exactly the named education scholarships program is? Of course. Thank you so much for having me here today. I appreciate um, being able to take some time to talk about the program and some of the changes and really offer some great tips that you have for the chapters to getting the most out of these programs. So it's been really great to be here. So the Named Education Scholarship is a program that is within the CCIM Institute Foundation. We've been doing it since the early 2000s and it's really started off a small number of scholarships and it's grown considerably over the years. I wanna explain a little bit about it just in case anyone on the call is new to the program so they understand sort of what it is. What happens is this is a scholarship that is jointly funded by a chapter and the foundation. Generally what happens is a chapter wants to create a scholarship in honor of someone or in memory of someone that was important to their specific chapter. So the chapter would raise $12,500 and then ask the foundation to match that $12,500 for a total of $25,000. $25,000 is then invested by the foundation. And what happens is every year it gets 4% interest and that spins off a $1,000 scholarship. So once these scholarships are set up, um, the, the interest spits off the money each year to create the scholarship. And then what the foundation does is that it holds the money and it pays out the scholarship recipient, but the chapter actually accepts the applications, determines who gets the awards. And so it's really a joint effort between the two of us. Um, the chapters let us know when they've awarded the scholarships. We have a form that they fill out. And then once we receive information from the recipient themselves, we pay the scholarship directly to them. So we started off with just a few scholarships and actually now we have over 150 of them. And so since we have so many, we have been changing and updating our program and our guidelines to make sure that we can still offer as many as we can to chapters that are still looking to either have new ones or add to the ones that they already have. So that is sort of the, the basis of the program. And it's been great opportunities for the, in, the foundation to really help provide scholarships at a local level um, for candidates who are looking to complete their courses. Thanks for sharing that background with us, Carrie. Now let's dive a little deeper into what exactly the Named Education Scholarship Program changes are and how they impact the chapters. Sure, so the main change in terms of impacting chapters in terms of sort of marketing is we did change the name this year. Um, we changed it for a Named Endowed Scholarship, which is what most people are used to hearing it be called. We changed it to Named Education Scholarship. We really thought that that better reflected the intent of the scholarship and allows us a little more flexibility with new ones going forward. So all of the, um, the program itself has changed, but I also want to reiterate that none of the previous scholarships that have been contracted before this time, all of those remain the same. Any changes that we discussed today are for new scholarships. So I want to make that clear that these are for new scholarships going forward, all of these changes. And so one thing to note is for the chapters, if you update your websites or if you're updating some collateral or some of the things that Gina talks about today, please call it a named education scholarship because um, that's really important in sort of going forward with um, updating our new name and just making sure that everyone knows that that change has been made. Other things we did is really to sort of clarify some of the specifics of the scholarship. So I talk a little bit about the 4%. And so we clarified in our new updated guidelines, um, what happens if the 
investments go above or below 4%, how we deal with that. Um, we've added some agreements and language in there to make it a little bit clearer how a chapter would apply for a scholarship and also how the process of what happens and how it's awarded, how it's paid out, how the chapter communicates with the foundation. And then we've also added some information about um, how we match future scholarships. So before we used to have a larger pool of money that they would match and we've actually put some guardrails around it in the coming years and we have a smaller amount to match right now. And so we've changed one thing people will notice in the new guidelines is if we will match 12,500 if you have one to three scholarships. Once you have more than three, then the match that comes from the actually goes. And that's really important because we have some chapters that some that don't have any scholarships yet, and we want to have them have the opportunity to get a scholarship and only have to raise that 12,500. But we have other chapters that have quite a few scholarships. And so we want to make sure that as they continue to add, um, the amount we match goes down and actually has 10 scholars reached yet. But once they do match anymore for anything above 10. Carrie, what if more donations are made to a particular account beyond the fully funded point? Sure. So what we talked about is initially it going up to 12,500, but some um, chapters, and that spins off $1,000, but some chapters want to be able to spin off $1,500. In order to do that, we need a total of 37,500 in the account. So money can continue being added to the account to reach that 37,500 threshold, and that's what it has to get to, to spin off that additional, that more money for the scholarship. But really what's important is communicating with the foundation about this. We need to know if that's the intent, because we're gonna continue to award the scholarships and work with you to award the scholarships. But if you'd like to build up your account to make sure the scholarship award is a higher level, please let us know, because um, we have some chapters that are doing that. And it's just, it's good to know, because like I said, there's over 150 of them, and we want to make sure that we know which ones, what the plans are that each chapter has for their scholarships. Can a chapter raise the full 25,000 themselves? Yes, absolutely. And then um, we would still manage it, because really, um, what's different between the foundation and many of the chapters, though not all, we are a 501c3 charitable, charitable foundation. So often the reason that we are collecting a lot of the funds for these scholarships and managing the funds is because we have, we are a charitable foundation and we can do tax receipts and things like that. And so if you wanted to create one, raise the whole $25,000 yourself, if your chapter members want to receive tax deductible donations for those, for the contributions they're making towards those scholarships, they can go to the foundation, we'll create the scholarship, we'll still manage the money and we'll still give out the 4% every year. Thanks, Carrie. This seems like a tremendous opportunity for not only the chapters to get their members involved, but sponsors and the community as well. Can you tell us how people can donate to the Named Education Scholarship Program and what is the preferred way? Absolutely. There's been a little bit of that confusion necessarily, but I really want to be clear about sort of the easiest way to do it because it's been done a couple different ways over the years. Um, in some instances, the chapters collect um, their half and then send us a, a one check for $12,500. That is completely fine. We're happy to take the check that way. In other instances, some of the members at the chapter level would like to get a tax deductible receipt. So in that case, instead of giving the money to the chapter and then the chapter coming to us, we have an online donation form. And on that online donation form, we have a section where you can specify what scholarship you're raising the funds for. So you can really just send the funds directly to the foundation and say, I'd like it to go to X scholarship. What's important is that many of these scholarships, sometimes the fundraising is very quick. Sometimes it takes a while. It can be two to three years that a chapter collects their funds. Actually, according to the guidelines, we have we give you up to five years to raise your part of it, which is fine. And so what we do is there's an application. The chapter lets me know that they intend to create the new scholarship. They let me know sort of who it's in honor of. They let me know what their plan is to do it. And then once I sign off on those things, they are free to begin fundraising. So at that point, the money can come directly to the foundation. I know that the scholarship is being set up. I know the plan, I have it all set. And then I communicate with my contact at the chapter, um, monthly, quarterly, whatever you're interested in knowing of how much money is in the fund. So I can help you track how much money you've collected. And then whenever it goes straight to the foundation, 
we can receipt the individual donor. Um, and so you can mail it to us, you can do it online. There's a couple of different ways you know, to give money to the foundation. It's just very important to make sure you specify what scholarship you're giving to. So like it says in the slides here, checks me to make sure you note in the memo fund, you know, this specific scholarship, because we want to make sure that the funds that are donated are allocated into the scholarships that the intention is for. Excellent. And then is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Sure. So I guess I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about the foundation in general. Um, we are a charitable foundation, and so we run on donations. Um, a lot of those donations come in at the annual membership renewals period. Um, there's a checkoff box to donate to the foundation. And so that's an opportunity for all members to donate to us, which is wonderful and we really appreciate it. We run some events. We had an event at our governance meeting that supported our veteran scholarship. We also sometimes do silent auctions that are open to all members. But so there's the ability to donate to the foundation through these named education scholarships, but donations to the foundation in general help with our matching funds, help towards our veteran scholarship, help towards our diversity scholarship, and so there's a lot of opportunities to donate to the foundation at an individual level or at a chapter level. We actually have some chapters that have sponsored um, our Operation Ping Pong, which is our event that we held in Boston. And it was great. And they were sponsors and they helped support um, that scholarship program. And we were really, really grateful for that support. So there's really many ways um, to work with the foundation and make donations to the foundation. And also what we're trying to really do is showcase the impact a little bit um, of in the past. So if you've given away out a to a particular recipient, great story. We would love for you to share that with us. We would love for you first to share it with your members, but then share it with us so we can do it on a broader level. We'd like to share it on our social media. We have a newsletter that we created. We really want to sort of strengthen the partnership between the foundation and the chapters and really demonstrate to all the members as a whole, the impact of the foundation and what we're doing to help advance careers um, within the commercial real estate industry. So please feel free to reach out, share your information with us. We would love to get it. Thanks, Carrie. That's a great. That was a great segue into uh, into tips on how to market the named education scholarships. So um, I'm just going to dive into those uh, right now a little bit. Uh, one of the least expensive and easiest methods for outreach is through a targeted drip email marketing campaign. You're going to want to segment the campaign by target audience using a different voice and tone for a message that reaches sponsors and one that reaches prospective donors. Create a separate list of those you know who regularly donate as well. You can speak to them a little bit differently. Based on your segments, create a solicitation calendar that makes sense. Decide how many times you want to do email outreach per month, per segment, and then think about all of the various email types you may send out, including uh, standalone emails, um, solicitation in your newsletters, and if you can, through uh, additional uh, sponsor email outreach. Target and tap into those testimonials. Use testimonials in your marketing that evoke a feeling. Depending on who you're speaking to, a feeling of giving back on the donor side and or the benefits of the program on the recipient side. Testimonials in print are a great way to share a snippet of the perspective from a few different angles, the donor and the recipient. When doing this, make sure to keep the testimonials short and sweet. Also be sure to include a headshot and name to give a sense of authenticity to the testimonial. Video testimonials are a super popular uh, way to, to share testimonials right now. Videos are engaging and a way to provide a genuine connection by showing a real face, name, voice, uh, and benefit story from donor dollars. Don't miss out on the opportunity to bring in past scholarship winners uh, as well to talk about their experience at your events. Spread the word on social media. Carrie mentioned how we will help share your story. Um, you can do that as well through testimonials. And then uh, ask your leadership uh, to share, comment, like your posts and tag winners names in all posts. So the posts go on their pages as well. And then ask past recipients to share, comment and like on uh, to celebrate uh, the donations, uh, the scholarships, donations, any, any sort of successes that you have. And then use relative hashtags to share your story among other people outside of your connections. 
use your website, announce your recipients online and include a headshot again uh, with their names uh, and um, you know, of course, what, what the scholarship was possibly used for. Uh, ask recipients to write a blog about their experience and reach out to past recipients to comment and again, share their stories. Drive all emails to your scholarship web pages and or blog posts. And then additional opportunities, leverage your sponsors. Include an opportunity to donate at each event you host, whether it be in person or online. Sometimes uh, when you have an online event, you can drop in a link to donate in your chat area. Talk about or promote giving at, um, at all of your events, like I just mentioned, and webinars um, like this are also a great way to get people uh, to talk about their experiences too. So it's not just dropping a link, it's also uh, inviting uh, uh, donors um, to talk about how they feel about donating, as well as uh, the recipients to talk about their experience. And then again, uh, engage, uh, engage in your community. So at this time, I'd like to, uh, to start a Q&A session with Carrie. Carrie, if there are three takeaways from this chapter marketing meetup, what would they be? Sure. Um, so the first one is really that the foundation and institute are here to help you manage and market these scholarships. We are your partner in this process. We've created the scholarships with you, and we want to make sure that we're there to help you market them, help make sure the scholarship recipients receive their funds. Anything that we need to do to help you in the process, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We definitely want to be partners in this instance. Um, the second thing that's important is that it should be you, the, the program name. You know, the fact that we've changed it to named education scholarships, that's that's a big change for us. And just note that whenever we're, there's some place that you needed to update that information, that would be great. Um, I also want to let you know that all of our program updates, like for our guidelines and our application, those can be found on the chapter resources page. And so all of the updated, there's updated FAQ, all of that is there too. So if you'd like to review changes or FAQs, you can. Also, I as you know, Jean has mentioned, we love to share stories. You know, it's important for you to share your stories locally to show who has received the scholarships and who's gotten the support. And it's great for us too. Um, it's really important for us to share them on a national level because really we want to demonstrate the impact of the foundation and the important work that we do um, and how we help individuals within commercial real estate go towards getting their pin. Like that's sort of, you know, that's the bread and butter of why we're here of helping people get their pin. And so, Anytime we can share that information of the success stories, like we're just thrilled to be able to do so. So always reach out. Um, if you do have questions for me, um, you can reach out to foundation at ccim.com. That is our general foundation email address. Um, and I think I would be a great way to reach out because there's a couple of us that monitor it so we can make sure that we respond to you. Excellent. Well, uh, we have some questions uh, from the audience. So I'd like to start. Uh, with the first one, um, can endowment scholarships be used to send officers to chapter officer training, or are the scholarships only applicable to core courses? Right now, um, each scholarship has its own scholarship agreement. And so in formulating the agreement and creating what the scholarship is for is where you determine the awards that are being made. Almost all of them that have been created up to this point are for recipients to take courses. Um, many of them are focused on core courses, although we have some that are going to students in real estate programs, and we have others that go towards the CCR or exam fees. And so really that would be sort of the initial conversation with me about what you'd like your scholarship to do. Um, and then we can see what the options are at that point and how we would create a new one to suit your needs. Excellent. Next question. How do we assist the members that submitted scholarship applications and were denied, but didn't receive a reason? Um, I'm a little confused by this one. I'm not sure if it's, a, is it a, a member who applied for a chapter scholarship and was denied locally, or if it was necessarily for our national scholarships. If you have any questions about acceptance or denial for national scholarships, I encourage you to reach out to foundation at ccim.com. We're happy to provide any additional information there. Otherwise, um, if you have questions about your changing your require your scholarship, um, requirements or if you have you know want to refine them at all um you can always you know, talk to me about them and we can look at them and see if they're helpful if they need any updates but i would think on the local level um the scholarship administrator for each chapter um would be able to communicate 
whether the exceptions are the denial and, and the reasoning behind that. All right, we, we got another question in. Um, our chapter just funded a scholarship this year and I've received a donation from a member to fund another one in 2024. What are the odds uh, they'll be accepted to fund another scholarship in 2024? And uh, should they refund the donation to have the 2024 donation uh, to make the, the donation uh, to the foundation directly? I think that depends on if the donor is looking to receive um, a tax deductible receipt or if you're one of those chapters that can provide that for them. That's really a communication between you and the donor. I know some are some chapters are 501c3s and they can provide these charitable receipts. If you cannot, and that's something that the donor is interested in doing receiving, I would definitely um, talk to them and see if they can make the donation directly to the foundation so they can get that tax deduction. Um, the odds are of receiving one next year. I think what you'd need to do is reach out to me to start the application process sooner as opposed to later. So I'm aware that it's in process. Um, I've had talked to two or three different chapters chapters who are interested in creating scholarships next year. Um, and we're in the budgeting process right now for how much we're going to match. It really, it sort of depends. If we have a lot of applicants from chapters that have one to three scholarships, we can't fund as many. Generally, our matching has been around $60,000, $65,000 the past two years. But if we see a lot of applications from chapters that have seven or eight, well, we only have to match 5,000. Then we can do quite a few of them. So I think it all really is determining on the chapter that is interested. But my, I would encourage you to reach out to me sooner as opposed to later, just so that you're on our radar um, so that we can know that you're starting with your fundraising, particularly because your fundraising is done. Um, that would be great. And then we could just get you, you know, moving you know, in the pipeline right away. Thank you, Carrie. Another question here. Uh, does the $1,000 award have to be given to only one individual or can it be split between two? Again, this is generally based on how the agreement was set up. Um, we tend to encourage $1,000 because they are generally for core courses and $500 doesn't defray all that much of the cost. It really is up to the chapter. And if you have an agreement that was set up to do two $500 ones instead of 1,000, and that's something you can absolutely do. If you're unclear, feel free to reach out to the foundation. We have all of the agreements on file. We can look to see how they were set up. We can look to see what you, the intention was in the beginning. And if you'd like to make an update to it, that is fine. Generally, it's $1,000 because that seems to make the most impact to defray the cost of the actual course. All right. I think that is all of our questions uh, that have come in. So I wanna, I wanna take this time right now to say thank you for joining. Uh, we hope to see you next month at the Chapter Officer Training in Chicago. Carrie will be available on site to discuss more about the scholarships and how chapters can support the CCIM Foundation. This recording will be available on the Chapter Marketing Resources page. Our next meetup will be July 21st at 1 p.m. Central. Look for the topic in Zoom link in the coming weeks. And while you wait, please take a few moments to give us your ideas for an upcoming chapter marketing meetup on our online poll. Link is available in our meeting requests or on the chapter marketing resources page. Any questions? Email us at chaptermarketing at ccim.com. Have a great day and uh, we will see you soon.